Hello guys, welcome back to Visible Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily Visible Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the determinant and indeterminant pain. Also, I will explain that how to find the determinancy of the different beams. And these are the different examples in which I will show that how to find that whether this beam is a determinant or indeterminant. So the main difference between the determinant and indeterminant beam is their equilibrium equations. So if we can solve our beam with the help of three equilibrium equations, they are called three equilibrium equations, summation of fx is equal to zero with the help of summation of y equal to zero and summation of moment equal to zero. If we can solve our beam, if we can analyze our beam with the help of these three equilibrium equation, then we call this type of beam is known as the determinant beam. Determinant, determinate beam. But if we cannot solve our beam, we cannot analyze our beam with the help of this equation, but we need some more steps to do to solve our problem or beam problem. So we call that this beam is now called as the indeterminant beam. So these three equations play an important role in the statistics of the beams. Now, how to find out that which beam is a determinant and which is indeterminant? That which beam is going to be solved with the help of this three equilibrium equation and which beam cannot be solved with the help of this three equilibrium equation? So, the main formula is R is equal to 3N. This is the basic formula used to differentiate between the determinant and the indeterminate beam, where R is the number of reactions in a beam. 3 is constant. 3 is a constant number. And N, N is the number of segments or number of members number of members so let's suppose we want to solve we want to find out that which type of beam is a determinant and which is indeterminant beam let's take an example first of all this simply supported beam so now to know that this beam can be solved with the help of these three equations or not so if if this beam can be solved with this help of these three equilibrium equations we would call a determinant beam so now, first of all, we have to find it determinancy. So the, we need three things. R is equal to 3N. 3 is known to us while the R and N are unknown to us. So for this beam, it's a simply supported beam. We know that it's a hinge support and this is a rotor support. So the rotor support can only provide the vertical support reaction and the hinge can provide both the vertical and horizontal. So this will be called is the one support reaction, this will be the second, and this will be the third. So the number of support reactions are three here. So we can call R is equal to three. And the number of members, this is only one member. This whole beam is a one member or one segment. So N will be called is one. And three is a constant we know. So now by plugging into this formula, R is equal to three N. We know that R is three and 3 is a constant multiplying it n is 1 and so 3 is equal to 3 so now this will be called is the determinant beam determinant because if i explain it here again that if r is equal to 3 n this will this case is known as the determinant the beam will be called is the determinant beam determinate beam if R is greater than the 3N, it will be called as indeterminate beam. And if R is less than 3N, it will be called as unstable beam. Unstable beam and we have and we need more supports for this beam. So now the first example we saw and it was with R was equal to the 3n so it was the determinant b case this one because r is equal to the 3n so this was the determinant b 
and we can solve this beam with the help of these three simple equations, equilibrium equations. Now let's come to the second case which is the cantilevered beam. So we know that there is a fixed support and fixed support have the vertical reactions, the horizontal and the moment. It can also resist the moment. So we have 1, 2 and 3. So reactions are 3. Also there is a one segment, one member beam only n is equal to 1. So we have r is equal to 3 n. So r is equal to 3 and 3 multiplied by 1. So it comes out to be 3 is equal to 3. Now this is also a determinant beam. And we can solve this beam with the help of these three equilibrium equations. Now let's come to the another type of the beam this which is a propped cantilever beam having the fixed support and the rotor support at the other end of the beam. So this is a rotor support it can provide the vertical resistance that can also provide the vertical resistance the horizontal resistance and the moment. So we have 1, 2, 3 and 4. So the R is equal to 4 now because it can resist the 4 it can provide 4 reactions R is equal to 4 also this N is equal to 1 because we have one sig or one member so R is equal to 3 N R is equal to 4 and 3 multiplied by with 1 so this comes out to be that 4 is greater than the 3 we can see here there is a 4 while on the right side we have 3 so it means 4 is greater than the 3 so if R is greater than the 3 N it means that this beam is indeterminate and determinate beam so now we cannot solve this beam with the help of these three equilibrium equation but we need some more steps to solve this beam now let's come to the another beam which is a which is provided with three supports so there is a hinge support it can provide the vertical and horizontal resistance there is a roll support which can only provide the vertical and there is a hinge support which can provide the vertical and horizontal so 1, this is a 2, and this 3, and this will become 4, and this will become 5. So 5 support reactions, so R is equal to 5, and in, in this case, it is 1 segment, and this is the six, second segment. So this is 1, and this is 2. So N is 2 in this case, because it shows the number of segments or the number of members. In this case, these are 2. So we have formula R is equal to 3n. Now r is 5. 3 multiply with n is 2. So 5 and 6. So it means the 6 is greater than the 5. It means the 3n is greater than the 5. So it means 3n is greater than the r. So it means this beam is unstable. So what should we do? We should provide some more supports to stabilize this beam. Either we can replace this roll support by the hinge support, then it will be may become the determinant beam. Now the last beam is a hinge type of in which there is the hinge support, there is the internal hinge and there is the fixed support. So this hinge support can provide the vertical and horizontal, the internal hinge can also resist the vertical and horizontal force, while the fixed support can resist can resist the vertical, horizontal and the moment. So we have 1, 2, 3 and 4, 5, 6 and 7. So the number of reactions are equal to 7. N is equal to, this is a one member and this is another member. So we have two segments again. N is equal to 2. So R is 7 equal to 3 into 2. 7 is greater than the 6. So it means that R is greater than the 6. So we again comes in the, we again came into the category of indeterminate beam. So this is also called as the indeterminate beam. Hope you guys understand that how to find the determinancy of a beam. If you can find out that by the help of this formula, if it is greater than the R is greater than the 3n, it will be called as indeterminate. If it is equal, it is determinate. If it is less than the 3n, it will be called as the unstable beam. And with the, with, the end, with the determinant beam, we can use these three equations to find out the support reactions in the moment. While in the undeterminate, in the unstable case, we cannot use these three equations.
but we have to use some other steps to find out these support reactions. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.